Okay, so where are we, guys? Where are we right, right now? Where, where are we standing? Where am I standing? On the bridge of the Freedom Star. And the Freedom Star, what is that? Is a, is a ship. And what's the significance of the Freedom uh, we, Star? We retrieved the boosted rockets. Huh? The boost, so the solid rockets, which uh, after two and a half minutes, they burn out, land in the ocean, yeah? yeah. And you guys go and fetch them. We were right? to get one, and then the Liberty Star gets the other. So one apiece. Right. So the other Liberty Star is out there. Right. Is that over here? So we got the Liberty Star, and this is the Freedom Star. Yes. Okay. Is that the only thing that these ships do is recover solid rockets, or do they do? Uh... No, we also have to worry about the external tank. You get the external tank? Large, yeah, we tow it large. Okay, you tow the yeah, other. Okay. So that's from Mashu. You uh, you go over to Mashu and tow the tank in the barge over here. Yeah. Is that right? From Louisiana. We actually go to Mississippi. And it's Mississippi. Smaller tugs bring it to me, so. Okay. But you but so you take it from uh, from some from Gulfport across the Gulf and around uh, around the tip of Florida yep. and then bring it here. Okay. Because we lose that thing after the launch. It okay. goes, it lands somewhere in the, in the Pacific. Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean, okay. I thought it was the Indian Ocean. Those guys out there, I thought, told me it was in the Pacific. <laughs> is that right, Tim? Is this the Indian Ocean? That's what I, mean. That's what I thought, too. And these guys, anyway. Okay. Well, one of them oceans. It, it, it lands out there. I, I, I all right, so, so they don't, I'm with you. I think it's the Indian Ocean. That's the way I was, I was taught. Okay, so, so that thing lands there, you never get it again. But these solid rockets, you go and you're, you're going to go get these. Now, it also takes you how long? When do you need to be in position? Uh, we need to be in uh, our MSP uh, two hours prior to launch. It typically takes us about 20 hours to get there. Get you said MSP. What's MSP? What does that mean? Mission support uh, position. Mission support. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so you need to be there two hours before launch. Yes. Control the box or the box they give us. Uh, we want to make sure there's no ships going through the box, the landing zone, the impact zone of the boosters. Um, so we'll get on station, we'll look at our radars and make sure there's no uh, vessels that can come in contact with the boosters. All right. And uh, we'll control that for a couple hours prior to launch and um, we'll, be in, we'll be in position for launch. How big is this box that, you, that you're going to put? Probably 100. 100 square miles, probably something. 100 square miles? I'd say so, yeah. So you guys are running around with the ship making sure no one comes in there? We don't, we don't run around. We have radar. Your radar? Okay, right, radar. right, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll open our radar up to 96 miles, and uh, you know, we have a plane flying overhead, too, and they help us out you know, finding ships in the corners and stuff. And All right. Just, you know, make sure it's safe. The primary box is probably only 20 square miles. Okay. Um, but the whole box, in case they were to um, have to make a return to landing site or something like that, All right. they, they, it's pretty big. Okay. So you, you want to make sure no one's in the danger zone of getting hit by a solid rocket. Because yep. then they would blame you guys. Right? <laughs> like, Who are those guys out there? More or less, right? <laughs> hey, what's up? Those guys got hit you know, some some guy out there fishing. Do you have, do you have people there? Usually you got a scatter out there? Or, uh? these, these guys, they get contacts all the yeah. time. And they're constantly yeah, there's talking. typically one, you know, a couple of ships we have to uh, you know get with the Coast Guard. And, and we can only suggest they change course and direction and speed or something like that. But, uh, okay. You know, and, they, and they usually will to work. When you say there's a rocket going to fall out of the sky, they usually will to work. <laughs> I guess their attention? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, but I'm, I'm trying to get this last flounder. <laughs> hey, how far away from Florida are you when you when you recover those things? 125 100. miles off the coast of Jacksonville. Okay. That, that's where you'll be. That's where you pick those things up. And you bring them back here? Yes. All right. And then from here, they get loaded on to... Uh, Something else that takes them by train up to uh, somewhere, or what happens? They disassemble them here, All right. and uh, we keep the forward skirts and the aft skirts. We refer them here in Florida locally. Oh, okay. And then the, uh, the segments themselves will get put on a train and shipped to Utah to be for the be, be, be packed again. What's going on back here? This is a throttle. Looks like a throttle. It's the aft console. Aft console. Any kind of operations we do, uh, dives right. in the water or retrieving or anything, this is where we would operate the vessel from. All right. Oh, look at the back deck. So you can look at the back deck and watch the work being done oh, on cool. the back deck. All the work gets done back there. It's safe. Oh, wow, look at that. So what are these controls? What's the joystick for? Is that uh? This is your uh, throttle if you're stern thruster. All right. Um, your bow thruster here. Okay. This is a full uh, DP system right here. Um, basically the same thing you have on the forward console is back here. Right. This is your props, your lift system for your props, your main engines. Um, and then um, you have a tiller instead of a wheel here Okay. your rudders. And uh, pretty much you can do anything you can do from, from up there, you can do it back here. Okay. At any time. All righty. All right, guys. Well, I, I don't want to keep – it's getting late here. You guys are staying overtime uh, in, without pay, I assume. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see the full parachute rails there? That's our recovery crane right there. All right. It's an articulating boom. We use that crane to launch the boat over here. 
and also to recover the frustrum. The frustrum is the large cone that goes on the top of the solid rocket booster. Those two devices on the port quarter over there are called diver operator plugs, or EDOPs. Our divers are going to take those down to a depth of over 100 feet, position them under the booster. The booster is going to be in a, uh, a vertical manner with the aft skirt open to the ocean. They're going to stick one of those plugs into the open nozzle. We're going to connect an air hose from this hose reel over here. We're going to pump all the water out of that booster. It's going to rise up out of the water, fall over on its side. We're going to connect to the parachute shroud lines and we're going to tow it in using the ship's tow winch right here, right there. We're going over to the uh, Liberty Star next. All right. Liberty Star is identical to Freedom. One major difference you're going to see is that Liberty has a Weibel radar on board, a tracking radar for ascent debris. Freedom is also configured to hold for one ascent of those. For ascent debris, you shouldn't really close over that. That means anything that might that's coming off, absolutely, they can track it. That's All right. right. Okay. Like foam from ET tanks or right. anything else. Cool. All right. That's the purpose. They have two of those radars. One of these ships will be carrying the radar for the offshore position. The second radar is going to be on an Army landing craft about 10 miles offshore. All right. And they've got a third radar located in a land facility nearby. So they triangulate three different angles to get a full picture of what's going on with that shuttle during the first couple minutes of flight. Okay. So this thing looks for debris coming down from the external tank or from, uh, and how, how, how much range is, is it to protect, to protect you guys or to protect uh, anybody who might be in the area, right, if uh, something's well, coming down? That's actually to uh, give uh, NASA an early heads up on any problems on the, uh, the orbit. I see. Now that's something I'm interested in. That's is that a, a uh, recompression uh, shape? Re oh, is this for your divers? Absolutely. Okay. How many divers do you have uh, go out there with you? We have eight on each ship. Eight on each ship. Yeah, we've got some really talented guys here. Uh, our core group are diver EMT paramedics. Wow. We borrow divers from, from throughout the company from the United yeah. Space Alliance. Uh, we have engineers, we have technicians, we have welders. That's their hat on the beach. Yeah. When we go to sea, they're our recovery guys. Right. They're also trained divers. They're also trained to operate that hyperbaric chamber operation. Chamber right in. Now, what we're real proud of is they've achieved world-class status. They have among the best safety records of any dive group in the world. And that's a big deal. You wouldn't expect anything less from NASA, would you? No, you would not. <laughs> yeah. You compare us to commercial, or compare us to the Navy or anybody else, we're top dogs. <laughs> what do you think of that, Navy? All right, cool. But it's just amazing, Navy, you know, all the different disciplines that come into the space program. You know, it's oh, not just... Yeah. It's not just a bunch of aerospace guys. You know, no, it it's, uh, no, it isn't. Yeah. A lot of professional mariners here. Yeah. You got your kitchen right here. All right, so this is where all the cooking goes on. You guys eat pretty well on the ship? Very well. Yeah, what do, they, what do they feed you? What's a typical dinner? You ever get a burger? You can get burgers, uh, steaks, pork chops. Got it all. Regular food? Yep, regular, regular food. food. All right. It's like a nice place to hang out there. Place. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Bill. Good luck with whatever you're studying there. What well, is that stuff? It. What do you got? Are you working Man on something? You going to school? Managerial accounting. Managerial accounting? Not fun at all. <laughs> Not fun. That's all right. Just get through the class. <laughs> the fun comes later. Yeah. School isn't necessarily fun. Yep. Hear that, kids? School isn't necessarily fun. But it could, it should be fun. I mean, the teachers will kill me. But uh, it's, it's better way afterwards. Okay. It'll get better. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Appreciate all it. All right, man. All right. Watch your step. All right. Okay, this is Liberty Star's engine room. Liberty and Freedom are 2,900 horsepower vessels. They have two main engines. They're 12-cylinder EMDs. What that boils down to is electromotive division at General Motors. These are marine variants of a diesel locomotive engine. Okay. Diesel engines powered by diesel fuel. We also have back aft here. generators. They provide our electricity when we're at sea. They're 871 Detroit diesels. They'd be equivalent to a large truck engine. It's a big engine. Yeah, yeah it is. It's guys? noisy down here. Okay, right. it gets to 120 degrees and 120 decibels down here in the Gosh. summertime. It's a miserable place. <laughs> so this is an automated engine room. The engineers so you know, you make routine rounds. But you don't want to hang out here. No, it's not no. a place you'd want to hang out at unless you had to fix something. All right. 
We've got all kinds of air compressors on board. Now this doesn't look like anything fancy, but this is actually pretty cool. This is one of the biggest air compressors you'll ever see. This produces yeah, the think. high volume, low pressure air that we pump into the solid rocket booster. That uh -huh. booster may only be about 4 PSI by the time we get the air out of here and through a 1200 foot hose and the diver operator plug into the booster, but it's enough to float that thing. Okay, so you want to press, get air inside of it to make it buoyant is the idea. Right, and, right. and, and to eject the water out through the plug. Ah, okay. All so, right? so again, that booster 30 foot above the water, 100 foot below the water, our divers have plugged it, we've connected the air hose, we start blowing through this uh, compressor, mm -hmm. she rises up out of the water, uh -huh. timber, over, continue pumping, get the rest of the water out, and we tow that sucker in. That's cool. Engineers workshop. Stuff breaks, this is where they come to fix it. They got everything from lathes to, to every tool imaginable to keep things.